In this final video of the YouTube SEM series, I'm going to show you how to do moderation using interaction. So this is where we ended, I believe. We had this pretty mediated model, very messy. And we also compared groups for moderation. But this time we're going to do interactions for moderation. Now we can also do moderated moderation, which I don't want to do, and that's where we just leave these groups in here and then throw interactions in there, and then we see how the interactions play out over the groups. That would be moderated moderation. We could even look at moderated moderated mediation using that and using these mediators if we were going to explore that a bit. But that's all way too complicated. So what I'm going to do is file save as uh, SEM interaction. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Delete, 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 but keep my all. So I just have one group with all the data. Next thing I need to do is I need to create those interaction terms. That would be interactions between play and CompUse, play and atypical use, and then CompUse and atypical use. The way to do that is to go to your data set and analyze descriptives descriptives and what we need to do is standardize play and comp use and a typical use before we multiply them together so here's play uh, not joy excuse me play a typical use and comp use click save standardized values and hit OK and what this will do is it will produce few new variables at the end here. Z use, Z atypical use, Z play. These are just standardized forms of those variables. And you'll notice, check this out, let me just show you save. If I go over to Amos, let me run this just to, just to illustrate a point here. You'll notice these values. Let's just take this one for example. Play to useful is 0.17. Let me do this. Go reselect the data since I just saved a new version of it and stick Z play in there. Now remember this was 0.17. I'm going to run this again. Proceed. Push up and it's still 0.17. It doesn't change in the slightest. Um, how on earth is that possible? Well that's another story. But just know that you could have Z scores or the regular variables in here and it wouldn't change at all. The only time when it really matters is with the interaction terms. Um, if we multiplied play times a typical use before standardizing them we would be we would have some multicollinearity issues uh, which we talked about before so we standardize them to remove that multicollinearity issue now how to multiply them you go to compute or transform compute I'm going to call this play underscore times underscore comp use. There can be no spaces or funny characters like a plus sign uh, in the variable name. Then just do z play times z comp use. Make sure you get the z ones, the, the standardized ones. Hit OK. It's going to create a new variable. I'm just going to do it again. Instead of comp use, I'm going to use a typical use. A tip use. A tip, and there we go, and hit OK. And then the last one would be comp use times a tip use. And hit OK. Alright, now we will have these new variables over here, these three interactions. Go ahead and save that. You may be wondering, James, how on earth, uh, if we standardize first and we get these weird negatives and we multiply a negative times a negative, how does it even work uh, that we're not warping things in our regressions? The answer is a little bit complicated. I'm going to have to say, trust me, it works. <laughs> if you want more of an answer, feel free to email me. All right, going back to Amos. Select that data again. After having saved it, make sure you save it. And now let's throw in those variables. Here's, oh, I have the up arrow, ah, down arrow, then do it. Okay, play times 
comp use, play times a typical use, and comp use times a, a typical use. There we go. And we need to go ahead and covary all of these. Kind of a pain in the rear. My good friend Russ is thinking about um, building a plugin that would covary everything on the left side instead of on the right side. Right now, Amos only covaries things on the right side, which is kind of annoying. Uh, that didn't help. Okay. I think I've got them all. Hopefully. Yeah. Maybe. Nope, I don't. And I think that's it. Okay. If I hit run, I can find out if I missed one. I did. Uh, I know that's through controls. And looks like we're good. Great. Cancel. And then I'm going to add lines. Now you may be saying, James, you have Z play here, but you only have regular comp use and regular typical use. Again, it doesn't matter. Uh, they'll do the same thing, so don't worry about it. Okay, I realize this is a terrible mess, um, so we'll just look at the output instead of looking at the diagram itself. Let me save this and run it and hope that it runs. Yes, did it run? Yes, it did. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, go to output. And for interactions, we're going to go to the estimates and we can just go see which ones are significant. Here are our interactions right here. We can see that none of them are significant. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, that's a bummer. So what do you do with that? Well, you say none of our interactions were significant. Boom, done. What we could do, though, is go look at modification indices. Let me close this, rerun it with modification indices, and find out if there's some path that would have been significant had we included it. Save, run, proceed. Modification indices, here we go. Uh, apparently, playing uh, times a typical use has some sort of effect on age. Other than that, there's nothing. Well, that's lame. Let's go ahead and pretend one of the, these was significant, just in case you end up with significant um, interactions. What, what would you do to plot these? Well, what you'd do is you'd go over here to my stats tools package, go to the two-way interactions tab, which is really just a spiffed up tab uh, or tool from Jeremy Dawson. Throw in your independent variable. For this example, we'll say that playfulness, we'll call it play, was our independent variable. Our moderator, let's say, was atypical use. And our dependent variable, let's say, was joy. Now we need to go find those um, those effects. So we have a mess. Now we're going to look at unstandardized values. We want to see what is the effect of play on joy. So play z play on joy is 0.172. Put that in there. 0.172. The moderator is atypical use. What is the effect of atypical use on joy? It's 0 0.044. 0 0.044. And the interaction, that would be play times atypical use on joy. Here's play times atypical use on joy is nothing. Point, negative 0 0.005. Nice. Uh, negative 0 0.005. And then we look at this. And what it says is. Well, here's uh, joy, the dependent variable on the y-axis. On the x-axis, you have your independent variable. And then your moderator is listed here. And I've even interpreted it for you. And this one, even though it's not significant, has a slide effect. And it would be interpreted as atypical use dampens the positive relationship between play and joy. Now, let's say there was more of an interaction. Let's say this is negative uh, 0.5. Enter. Woo! That's awesome. So what this says is that when um, the moderator is low, that's the blue line, when the moderator is low, there's this, there's this positive effect between 
play, and joy. But when the moderator is high, red line, there is a negative effect between play and joy. So the moderator would dampen the positive relationship between the IV and the DV. I hope that makes sense. How would you report this? Well, I just click on this and right click copy and then paste it in my report. And then I would also, of course, take some, some of this verbiage here and uh, write that in my report. And that's it for interaction. Hope that was helpful.